But you don't have to dress up in costume and wave breadsticks to attract trouble in this country. Sometimes all you have to do is invent something that powerful people don't want invented. Like a car that runs on water, for example. The motor car, the invention that shaped a century. The car changed our world forever. Yet even when it was new back in the 1900s, inventive minds were already searching for alternative ways to power that engine. Cheap, pollution-free fuel has always been an elusive dream. But for several Kiwi inventors, that dream turned into a nightmare. Three separate inventors, three individual solutions to the same problem. Malcolm Vincent, Archie Blue and Dylan Whitford all believed they'd hit the jackpot, finding a way to make a car run on water. But each was to find his dream brought ridicule, or bankruptcy, or violence. June 1994, Wanganui. And for 18-year-old Dylan Whitford, it's an evening he'll never remember. I'd went out to visit a friend of mine that night and basically woke up in the hospital the next day. The mystery assailants drove off and left him for dead. Dylan believes they were trying to suppress his invention. It's just a water fuel engine. But what I was mainly working on was the, the electrolysis unit with the fuel cell, which converts water into hydrogen and oxygen. Just days before, the Wanganui Chronicle had broken the story of his water-powered engine. After the uh, article in the paper, I noticed that it was being followed by a guy in a blue Mercedes for about two days prior to the attack. Dylan fled New Zealand and continues his work overseas. Still fearful, he only agreed to talk to us away from his home address. The idea of a hydrogen engine isn't new, but carrying the volatile gas has proved unwieldy and dangerous. While Dylan Whitford was working on a unit that could produce hydrogen from ordinary water, he wasn't the first to try it. Dylan was following in the footsteps of two other water power pioneers, and their work decades before also brought them grief. The 1970s saw worldwide oil crisis, as OPEC, the oil producing cartel, slashed production to force prices through the roof. The time was right for the inventor of a new technology to make a fortune. Enter Christchurch inventor Archie Blue, who looked set to cash in. In 1977, he was driving his Mini round the city powered by hydrogen derived from water. Daughter Nairi remembers riding it. Well, he came round one Saturday and said, how would you like to go for a ride in the car? And we said, oh. And he said, no, I've put the, the new motor thing in it. And we went up the Cashmere Hills, and it chugged along quite well. Archie was an electrical engineer and already in his 70s when he took his invention to the Channel Islands to demonstrate it for investors who lived in the British tax haven of Guernsey. The device was examined by the Royal Automobile Club of Great Britain and the water-powered car was big news. Archie patented his device in many countries and travelled to the United States to demonstrate it to potential investors there. But things went wrong. Part of his luggage went missing and they wanted demonstration straight away so he cobbled together some sort of a demonstration model but they couldn't get it to work properly. The demo was a disaster. Embarrassed, Archie returned to New Zealand in 1977 and never exhibited his invention again. The one inventor who came closest to the big money also paid the highest price. Malcolm Vincent was a backyard mechanic who claimed he'd created a converter that could be fitted to a normal vehicle, allowing it to run on hydrogen generated from water. He demonstrated the process on the streets of Nelson in a car borrowed from a mate, Brian Friend. He took the drive shaft out, which left the motor completely isolated to drive anything, and he bolted this water motor of his to the actual universal joint that goes onto the differential. And this, that actually drove the car. The successful test drive attracted the attention of the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research who inspected the car early in 1974. They were unimpressed. 
he would start this, this engine, and as it was downhill, it didn't have any trouble moving off, but when it got to the bottom of the hill, it stopped, and he had to restart the motor. So he had to keep restarting the motor after that, because uh, it wasn't any downhill anymore. Well, at that stage, he realised that he had nothing at all. Certainly didn't have any water engine. Certainly um, didn't have anything, really. But that wasn't the end of the matter, as Mary Jardin, Malcolm's widow, explains. Eventually, some people by the name of the Club of Rome um, came over and saw us to see if we could further the invention. The Club of Rome is a global think tank, and a director, Yui Meffert, apparently travelled from Germany to offer money, and lots of it. This is the original contract. It was signed by Yui Meffert and... Uh, Tom Staley, which is the secretary of the Club of Rome. We've got the Club of Rome seal on it. It says that $2,000 have already been paid, $8,000 to be paid on the signing hereof, $40,000 60 days after the date hereof, and $50,000 on the 30th of June, $500,000 on the day that mass production commences. Whilst we've actually received the cheques, there's either no money there or the cheques have been stopped. We're not sure which, but the cheques are, in fact, no good at all. We were then made bankrupt down there because of the water motor and the, the deal that hadn't gone through. So it was a really hard time for me and him and the children. It was quite hard. When we contacted the Club of Rome, they said they had no record of any dealings with Malcolm Vincent and no record of any UE method. Okay, we've got the contract. So, who was the man who came to New Zealand and gave Malcolm a contract? And who was he working for? By 1977, Malcolm Vincent was broke, reduced to working as a farmhand. His story was about to reach a bizarre and tragic conclusion. On the 10th of February that year, he was found dead inside a hay baler he'd been operating alone in a field. Malcolm Vincent was just 34 years old when he died, and rumours about the accident started almost straight away. Well, I don't know. There were just press reports or paper reports or something like that at the time um, that people were maybe trying to get rid of him because of the idea that the petrol companies at, at that particular time weren't very happy with the idea. Um, they felt that it was probably going to hurt their business, I guess. Nobody really ever did anything. Just rumours. Rumours and threats seem to surround these inventions. Dylan Whitford remembers a mysterious call to the Wanganui reporter who had written about his work. Someone had actually rung him up after the story was printed and, and told him that I should actually be very wary of what I'm doing and what I am saying. So did the oil companies try to suppress these inventions? Or did the car makers want the secrets of the water-powered engine for themselves? Recently, several major manufacturers have demonstrated prototype hydrogen-powered cars as the vehicles of the future, responding to the years of lobbying about the poisonous emissions of gasoline-fueled cars. The process of using water as fuel is now being seriously considered by those same scientists who for decades dismissed the idea as impossible. But if the pressure from the oil companies or vested geopolitical interests becomes too great, then I'm sure those concept cars, just like our homegrown inventions, will disappear in a puff of smoke.